Okay, okay, I'm gonna come back for another last time because I really want to show you the Feotech Scorp Mini. I'm really hoping the Scorp Mini is gonna be the gimbal I actually want to use on a regular basis because a couple of years ago, like July 2020, I invested £476 in this DJI Ronin S, which is an acclaimed gimbal. It's really, really good. And while I have used it occasionally, it spent more time gathering dust on the shelf than actually out with me shooting because while it is fantastic, it's just a bit too much for me to want to carry around and use on a regular basis. So in order to be a regular part of my kit, the Scorp Mini has to be small enough to fit in my bag, which it is. In fact, I can actually fit two in here. It has to be able to take a knock or two. It has to be quick and easy to set up and use. I'd like to be able to program it and it has to be strong enough to effectively stabilize my footage while also being light enough to not give me backache after 15 minutes. And the only way to see if the Scorp Mini actually fits all this criteria is to actually go out and shoot with it. But I didn't just want to capture any old thing. I wanted a real world shooting situation where I could really put the Scorp Mini through its paces and get a variety of shots. So I went out and shot a personal training session. Five to six reps, man. five to six reps. Yeah! <laughs> Breeze right in the middle there. That's it, that's it, beautiful. Yeah, man, well done. And then all the way up, stretching the shoulders. Well done, Charles. Good job, man. <laughs> now we're done. <laughs> awesome, now I'd call that an almost full success break it down. First of all, it ticks the weight box. At just 787 grams, the Scorp Mini is less than half the weight of the Ronin S. And after more than an hour of shooting in the gym, my back was absolutely fine. Now bear in mind, this is despite having damaged three facet joints on both sides of my back less than a week prior to shooting this. Seriously, I literally couldn't stand up just six days before that shoot. Which one is heavier? Not this one, thankfully. But it's not just about the low weight. The Squat Mini also has excellent ergonomics that make it really stable and comfortable to use over long periods of time. And a big part of that is this second handle, the so-called Scorpion's Tail. It allows you to have two hands very close to the center of mass, which is fantastic for stability, comfort, and control across a wide range of shooting positions and camera moves. But even with just one hand on either handle, it doesn't take much strength and inertia to keep it steady or get it moving. So it's a joy to shoot with. And as you can see from these examples, it effectively stabilized my footage no matter what camera move I was doing, no matter which position I was in or how I was holding it. And none of this footage has had any extra stabilization added in post. This is all completely raw footage. Plus, in order to get this bow-calicious look, I'm using this 50mm f1.8, which is a budget Sony Prime lens, and one that I don't think is intended for stable video. But my camera body is a Sony a7 III, which does have sensor stabilization built in, so that will be contributing somewhat to the results you're seeing here. But nevertheless, I think I can confidently tick stable motors. 
Now what about programmability? Well, this second handle doesn't only provide extra grip versatility, comfort and stability, it also contains a little touchscreen. Quite amazingly, pretty much everything you can do with the Feotech Scorp app, you can also do on this touchscreen. You can check the battery life, tune the motors, switch modes, adjust the follow speed, program a scenario, change the settings. There's so much versatile functionality for such a little screen. Yeah, it's really easy and quick to use while you're in the middle of a shoot. It's these scenarios plus the little tripod which add so much value to these gimbals as they can massively increase a solo filmmaker's production quality and shot variety by essentially acting as their own personal camera operator. And since I can usually be found out filming in nature, my stuff takes knocks, it gets dirty, it gets wet. Plus my full-time job actually involves filming out on construction sites. So you can imagine what that entails for my equipment. So I need it to not be fragile. According to Feutech, the Scorp Mini is constructed out of synthetic macromolecular resin and aluminium alloy and the resin parts do feel a lot lighter and a bit hollow but if that's what keeps the weight and the cost down then for me it's a trade-off that i'm willing to make especially because so far i've been quite mean to the scorp mini and it's been fine now you've probably noticed that the scorp mini has also been housing my phone because included in the box along with a whole host of various cables and other useful bits is this phone mount, which is really cool for me as an iPhone shooter. But initially I thought the Scorp Mini would definitely be overkill for a phone and that I'd prefer to stick with my Osmo Mobile 3. However, I was wrong. The Scorp Mini was an absolute dream to use with my iPhone. It's obviously not pocketable like my Osmo, but when I'm out shooting, I'm out shooting. It doesn't make sense to take everything out of my pockets assemble it, balance it, get a shot, and then disassemble it and put it all back, everything stays ready to go in my hand as I'm out. And with my iPhone obviously being much lighter than my A7 III, it felt like I was carrying nothing at all. Plus, when you add an anamorphic lens and an ND filter, then pocketable gimbals like the Osmo can struggle or become overloaded, even with counterweights, which is definitely not a problem for the Scorp Mini. So that's all my requirements ticked. Fantastic. Not so fast. There are some things to be aware of. First of all, the payload capacity isn't very high. The Scorp Mini is less than half the weight of the Ronin S, but it also has exactly a third the payload capacity at 1.2 kilos. So if you're like me and you're looking to downsize gimbals, just be aware that your favorite camera and lens combination might be too much for it. My workhorse get everything done combination is my Sony a7 III along with my Tamron 28-75 f2.8 which weigh exactly 1.2 kilos. So you might think I'd be able to get away with it, but I can't because when I mount them to the gimbal I have to mount them right at the back, which means when I try and tilt the camera backwards and forwards, it knocks against one of the arms. So I've had to use the humble nifty 50. But even then I've had a similar issue because when I'm getting low shots with the a7 III, I can tilt the screen out so I can see what I'm shooting. But then when I try and tilt the camera forwards and backwards, it knocks against the same arm. So, you know, it's not the best, but it's not exactly a deal breaker. It's inconvenient, but I can work around it. So despite those niggles, I've absolutely loved using the Scorp Mini. It's been a joy, and yes, it's gonna become a permanent fixture in my camera kit. Expect to see shots captured with it in future videos. Plus there's things that I didn't even mention, like really, really fast charging. There's this programmable little circular knob here, and there's the trigger at the front, which you can hold down to quickly change the modes, just like this here. Really, really useful stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Now go out and shoot something. Okay, my love, that's it.